darlings, welcome to our video on organic reactions. So in this video you'll need notes, your pen and paper will do, and table R. So make sure you dig out table R right now. Um, and as you're doing that, I'm kind of explaining a little bit of it. It looks really confusing, but pretty much what we're doing in this video um, is just kind of helping to explain how some of these uh, reactions occur. So the reactions that we'll have are combustion, a sterification, sterification is something that we will or will be doing in lab, um, saponification, fermentation, which we've talked about in bio, uh, two types of polymerization reactions, and then substitution and addition reactions. So the first one's combustion reactions. Here I have a picture of a gas stove. Um, it can be using natural gas, propane. Um, but pretty much we start out with a hydrocarbon. A hydrocarbon is just, remember, a carbon and hydrogen chain. In this case, um, it ends up being propane, which is C3H8. When we add oxygen to it, the propane and the oxygen molecules will break up and form carbon dioxide, water, and then heat will also be released. So this is called an exothermic reaction. And I'll write down the word exothermic so you guys have that. Exothermic. The uh, part thermic refers to heat. Exo means that it means that heat is being released, meaning that heat is actually located in the products. Um, I just remind you guys, uh, whatever's on the left hand side of the arrow, those are your reactants. The right hand side are your products. So we have again our propane molecules. Um, are adding to oxygen and breaking up into carbon dioxide, water, and heat. The major things to remember about this reaction, um, and it's an easy reaction to recognize, but many people tend to miss it, um, or they'll confuse it with something else. You're starting out with a basic hydrocarbon, so just a carbon-hydrogen chain, and look for the, um, the oxygen that we're adding to it, and it has to release CO2 and water. You will see this reaction. Um, just please recognize, memorize those uh, reactants and products. The next reaction is an esterification. So we remember esterification. Esters are sweet-smelling molecules. And if you haven't done this in lab, you will be doing this in lab. So we're starting out with an organic acid. This organic acid happens to be butyric acid. Um, this was vial G, if you did the smells lab. It wasn't the most pleasant. We call this putrid. Um, so we're actually taking this putrid molecule, making something that smells really good from it afterward. At least you hope. We have to add ethanol to it, or an alcohol to it. In this case, we added ethanol. And we produced water and an ester. So the key things to make sure that you get down about this reaction um, are that you are forming an ester at the end, and you're taking an organic acid, it's also called a carboxylic acid in table R, or, um, or it's called an organic acid in table R, but you also see it called a carboxylic acid. Um, you have to add alcohol to it and you produce water and that ester. Um, so from butyric acid we added ethanol and we produced water and something called ethyl butyrate. And that ethyl butyrate should have had a pineapple smell to it if you did your action correctly. Um, so the main things to get down here are, again, the reactants, your organic acid and your alcohol, and they produce water and your ester. And you might recognize, if we have something that's producing water, and we're taking two smaller molecules and forming one bigger one, that was dehydration synthesis back in bio. Um, so we are taking this part, the hydrogen off of this molecule, the OH off of this one, and if you took off the OH here and just took off the hydrogen from the ethanol, that's fine too. And then you're putting them together, you're forming a bond between that oxygen and that carbon to form this ethyl butyrate. So here we have the carbon from the butyric acid, and here happened to be the carbon, um, oh excuse me, the carbon from the butyric acid is right here, the oxygen from the butyric acid, or it could be from the ethanol, and water is one of your byproducts. So the reverse could happen, hydrolysis. We could take this water, add to ethyl butyrate, and break it up into butyric acid and ethanol. And just to show you guys this one again, um, it is something that we are doing in lab, so I want to make sure that you recognize this. We are taking off um, the OH from this group and just the H, producing water here, 
and then just like puzzle pieces, forming these two to form the larger molecule. The next one is saponification, and in this one we're making soap. So the way we can remember this is that the letters S-A-P-O, if we rearrange them, we form soap. Please do not write down soapification on your um, answer sheets. That's going to be wrong. It has to be saponification, so make sure you spell it correctly. We're taking an ester, just like an ester that we formed um, from the esterification lab. We're adding an inorganic base and producing alcohol and soap. So an example, um, the ester could be, like again, the one we had before. The NaOH, excuse me, sorry, um, is an inorganic base. And then we produce alcohol. Usually the alcohol we produce is glycerol. Pause me, take a few seconds to draw this glycerol molecule because you, you will see glycerol again, and you need to make sure that you recognize it. The other product that we'll form, uh, the main product that we're looking for in this reaction is soap. And in this case, it's, it's sodium stearate. You don't need to memorize this or draw this by any means, but I did want you to see it. It's a long hydrocarbon chain, and this one will be nonpolar, and then we have a polar head at the top. Uh, you might see the word sodium stearate, and that might be something you do need to recognize as being a soap. Another reaction which we've seen before is fermentation, and we make bread from this. Um, we can use yeast in our baking and produce that bread. We can also produce beer from this as well. So we take a sugar and an enzyme and we produce alcohol and carbon dioxide. So the ones that you recognize or you may have recognized are glucose. Um, usually in bread making we'll use sucrose, but you've seen glucose before. We can add yeast to it, and sometimes in this reaction you'll see that, um, if you see this drawn out, it'll have your sugar here, Oops, excuse me, and instead of showing yeast as one of the reactants, it, they draw the arrow and show yeast here above the arrow. That's still going to be the same thing, that means that we're adding yeast to the sugar to produce your alcohol and your carbon dioxide, which are these same two products. Um, see these little openings in the bread? That's actually formed from that CO2 molecule, so it's um, kind of puffing up or having puffs of CO2 in there. And the alcohol is a byproduct of this bread. Another reaction is polymerization. Polymerization has two different types of like subcategories. One's addition, the other one's condensation. Addition reactions, you're taking monomers, those small molecules, of unsaturated compounds to form large saturated chains. So let's go back to remembering what saturated and unsaturated ones are. And I'm using table Q to help me. Unsaturated molecules are going to be your alkenes and your alkynes. So they'll be double bonds and triple bonds. Your saturated molecules are going to be alkanes. So you're forming oops, that alkane which are single bonded carbons. So in this case we're taking uh, three alkenes, we know they're alkenes because they each have double bonds and we can just look off of table Q to see that these are double bonds. So these are three alkenes and you're forming them into one large alkane molecule. And We remember that these are alkanes because they are single bonds. So you might see it drawn this way or this way, where you have N in front of a parenthesis, inside the parenthesis are um, is going to be your alkene, and then you produce some alkanes here with the N on the outside. So, in case you see this again, I just don't want you to, um, I want you to be able to recognize this. So take a few seconds, pause me, draw these molecules, make sure they have these written down in your notes. So the other polymerization uh, reaction is condensation. This is your dehydration synthesis reactions. So you're taking monomers and removing water you're, um, and producing a larger polymer or larger molecules. So I took something that you might recognize. Um, these are your sugar molecules. These are your monosaccharides, small single sugars. We're going to remove an OH from one and an H from the other. So that produces water here. Um, and this reaction, and the rest of these join up to form the disaccharide. Okay, 
so we could take glucose and fructose and produce sucrose. If we take a lot of these monosaccharides, many of them, we can form polysaccharides, and an example of this would be cellulose. So condensation reactions are just like your dehydration synthesis reactions from bio. Your next reaction is a substitution. So you're taking a saturated hydrocarbon and taking one of the hydrogens and putting in another molecule in its place. So the saturated molecules, just to remind you, are the alkanes, and they are single bonded carbons. So in this case, we're taking carbons, and we're taking a Cl group from over here. Oops, sorry. We're taking a Cl and switching it out with hydrogen. So here is that Cl molecule, and when you switch out the hydrogen and the Cl or the chlorine, you produce HCl, or an acid. You might also see these with more than one, with each of these being hydrogens. Sorry for the messy diagram. And we have two carbons, the prefix for two, think back. Okay, it would be eth, it's a saturated, or excuse me, it's an alkane, so it's ethane. And we can take something like bromine, add Br to this, Br2, and pretty much just switch out one of the hydrogens and bromines. When we do that, we actually end up producing, and again, this is really messy, I apologize, I just want to show you another example. Instead of having a hydrocarbon with just carbon and hydrogen, you've added bromine to this. And if you remember from the functional groups, this will be your first set of molecules, your halides. And your last reaction are your addition reactions. So in your addition reactions, we're adding something, something to this. In the previous ones, we substituted in um, another molecule. So we're taking an unsaturated hydrocarbon. That's our alkanes, or alkynes. And we're putting in more hydrogens in this case. And so we have two different molecules here to show you, two different examples. One has the Lewis dot structures in there. The other one just has the structural formula. So just to show you the one with the structural formula, focus down here first. We're taking this alkene. We're breaking this one of these alkene bonds and forming an alkane. And we're putting in hydrogens in its place. So essentially, we're taking an alkene, making an alkane instead. The one at the top, where we have um, the Lewis dot diagrams, we're taking four electrons and splitting them up. So one carbon is going to pretty much add in another hydrogen. Same thing with this carbon. And it shows a much better molecule right here for you. All right, to summarize, combustion reactions will end up being, oopsie, sorry, combustion reactions end up having uh, a hydrocarbon and a oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Sorry about this, guys. Esterification, you're forming a sweet-smelling molecule from something like an organic acid or carboxylic acid um, and an alcohol. Saponification, you're forming soap. Don't call it soapification. Um, on your tests or anything like that, but you are forming soap. You're starting out with your um, your esters and an inorganic base like sodium hydroxide, producing glycerol and soap. Fermentations making bread and beer. So you can take sugar, any sort of sugar, and an enzyme. In this case, the enzymes we use are usually going to be yeast, and we produce CO2 and alcohol. The alcohol we produce and al and alcohol that we drink is going to be ethanol. We have two different types of polymerization reactions, addition and condensation. Addition ones, we have start with unsaturated to form saturated. Condensation, we actually, or that's going to be your dehydration synthesis reactions from bio. We can take monosaccharides, add them together to form disaccharides or polysaccharides. We can also form amino acids together to form polypeptides. Um, then we have substitution. We're taking a saturated molecule, putting... Um, replacing one of the hydrogens with another element, usually one of the halides or halogens. And then the addition reactions, just adding up one or more of the atoms um, to an unsaturated molecule. All right, so hopefully this helps. Make sure you get the notes down on this, and you will have to memorize these notes. Sorry, darlings. Have a great day.